Let me start by laying out a few facts for you. FDI coming into India in the first half of this current financial year was the lowest it has been in this period since 2007-8. As a percentage of GDP, both gross and net FDI are the lowest they have been since 2005-6. Hello and welcome to The Print. I'm TCS Sharad Raghavan, Deputy Editor. And today I'm going to be speaking to you about why FDI has fallen to this level and whether it's been happening only now or for a longer time. Foreign investments in India have fallen to near multi-decade lows in the current financial year, both in absolute terms and as well as as a percentage of GDP. An analysis by the print of FDI figures provided by the RBI shows that gross FDI into India in the April to September 2023 period, which is the first half of this financial year, stood at just $10.1 billion. The last time it was lower than this was in 2007-8, which is 15 years ago. Similarly, as a percentage of India's GDP, gross FDI flows dropped to just 1% in the first half of financial year 23-24, while net FDI fell to 0.6%. These levels were last seen in 2005-06. The government has argued in parliament that this fall in FDI flowing into India is because of a global slowdown. However, our analysis shows that while global FDI inflows have indeed fallen, India's share in global FDI inflows have also been falling. In other words, global FDI inflows have been falling and India has been receiving a decreasing share of what remains. India's share in global FDI inflows in January to June 2023 fell to their lowest level since 2017. So yes, there is a global slowdown, but that doesn't explain why India's share is falling, does it? Economists and investment analysts say that the reason behind India's lackluster FDI inflows, which have largely fallen as a percentage of GDP since 2014, is down to the policies of the Modi government. To begin with, Despite improvements in India's rankings on the World Bank's Ease of Doing Business Index, actually doing business in India is still a difficult process that slowed down further by red tape and low-level corruption. The second major deterrent for foreign investors is India's scrapping of all its bilateral investment treaties or BITs. This deprived foreign companies of any protection from judicial proceedings in India. The third factor is India's stated policies on free trade agreements or FTAs. Having signed one with Australia and the UAE, New Delhi is now trying to sign similar agreements with the EU, the UK and the US. This, analysts say, would give companies in these countries access to Indian markets without them having to invest here. Now let's get into some of the details of what's been happening historically when it comes to FDI. As we've already discussed, in absolute terms, gross FDI inflows to India amounted to $10.1 billion in the first half of this financial year. This is down 60% from the first half of 22-23, which itself was down 16% from 21-22. Now, October 2023 did see a surge in FDI, but that still puts the current financial year's total well below the same periods of preceding years. While absolute figures provide some insight into the money coming into the country, the expectation is that as the economy grows, so will the funds flowing into India. A look at FDI as a percentage of GDP shows whether this actually has been the case. During the first term of the Congress-led UPA, both gross FDI and net FDI shot up as a percentage of GDP. Thereafter, they fell sharply again, perhaps in reaction to the global financial crisis in 2008-9. However, the UPA ended its 10 years in power with both gross and net FDI making up a higher percentage of GDP than when it came to power. The Modi government has seen the opposite. Gross and net FDI as a percentage of GDP fell marginally over its first term and the second term has seen both fall even faster. While some of the recent slowdown in FDI in India could be explained due to what's happening in the US, 
the longer trend of largely flat FDI over the last decade is due to a perceived lack of genuine ease of doing business. Recently, over the last year and a half, the US interest rates were hiked and a lot of money was flowing back to the US. But over the last decade, the reason for FDI not growing along with the Indian economy is that genuine ease of doing business has not yet come in, is what analysts and economists have to say. There are still a lot of constraints and rigidities and so investors are still reluctant to put their money in India. Another major reason for India's poor FDI flows over the last decade has to do with India's termination of the majority of its bilateral investment treaties. BITs are basically agreements between two countries that provide various protections to companies from one country that's investing in the other. One major protection is that arbitration or court cases involving the company would take place in a third country so as to eliminate any possibility of any bias. Now, out of 74 bits that India had signed before 2015, the Modi government has cancelled 68. It then signed four more, but only two of these are operational. Basically, investment analysts say the issue is a simple one. When a company from another country wants to invest in India and doesn't fully know how things are run here, it used to rely on protections provided by the BITs. When they bought land or dealt with labour, they couldn't be taken to court in India, where there was the possibility that the outcome would be in favour of the domestic players. With the removal of BITs, these companies are now wary of investing their money in India. If you don't want to believe me when I say this, take a look at what a June 2022 paper published in the peer review journal, the Review of International Organizations, says. It said it has detected, and I quote, a significant reduction in FDI inflows to India in response to bid terminations by more than 30% compared to countries which have not terminated their bids. The other issue is that India is pushing ahead with free trade agreements with several major economies. It has already signed ones with Australia and UAE and is pursuing ones with EU, UK and the US. The issue with FTAs is that they give companies in these countries access to India's markets without them actually having to invest here. So why would they invest here? In December 2023, Minister of State for Commerce and Industry, Som Prakash, told the Rajya Sabha that FDI inflows have been impacted by the threat of global recession, the Russia-Ukraine conflict, global protectionist measures, and a decline of real GDP growth rates in Singapore, US, and UK. On the face of it, this sounds like it could make sense. But if global FDI flows are falling, but India remains attractive, then either its share in total FDI flows should remain the same or even increase, right? It's true that there's largely been an increase in India's share over the years, but lately this has been reversed. India's share in global FDI has fallen to around what it was in 2017, about six years ago. While countries like the US are looking to move their investments out of China, it's not India that they're choosing. They would rather move to Vietnam and South Korea, and that's something the Modi government needs to take serious note of. On that note, that's all from me. Thank you so much for watching.